Hey everyone, it's Sarah, and today I am back to do kind of an updated affordable gem video. Um, a couple of these I think were in my last affordable gem video, but I've gotten some new ones that I think are amazing, and I also am going to include some that I left out of the last video, um, so I thought I'd just do a whole updated video. I think I just did this video maybe it's probably only been five or six months ago or something, but it's definitely time for a new one. But anyways, I'm gonna jump right in. I'm gonna start with one of the newer fragrances that I picked up just in the last couple months. Actually, no. Yes, I just picked, I couldn't remember if I, if I picked this one up or if my friend sent this one to me, but no, she sent me, um, I think the same company that makes this one makes the Hypnotic Poison dupe as well. But anyways, I picked this up off, off of Mercari. It was listed as, it was $10. It was listed as a clone of Hypnotic Poison. And when I got it, it was a clone of the original Poison. And this, this is way better than even the reformulated Poison. I don't like the reformulated Poison. It, it completely lacks the really beautiful, sweet, grapey plum. You don't really get that at all in the reformulated version of Poison. All you get is a lot of the spices and the kind of vintage -y rosewood, but you don't get any of the beautiful sweetness of the plum that is so important. It's such a foundation of poison. It is that fruity goodness that brings me back to my childhood of spraying it on in the bottom of my mom's closet thinking I was spraying on grape juice because even the juice was purple. And it smelled like grape juice to me as a kid. And this, now don't get me wrong, it doesn't have, like it's definitely not as high quality as the original poison, but I have, put the original poison on, like my bottle from 1986, and then layered this over the top, and it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing because my original bottle of poison has lost a lot of the top notes. It doesn't have, it. you still get the plumminess, but it doesn't have that sweet, almost grapeiness. This does. So you can spray that on first to get all the goodness of the original poison and then spray this on over it and it'll give you that, you know, that same experience of having that juicy, grapey plum that I miss from my childhood. I mean, it really was like one of the best $10 purchases I've ever made. It was such a happy accident. It was such a good mistake to have happened and I'm so thankful to have this little $10 knockoff bottle of poison. It's called Position for Women. I have no idea who makes it. I think you can find it on Amazon because when I first got it and started talking about it, other people wanted it and um, the person that was selling it on Mercari, like I guess maybe stopped selling it. But anyways, p people started finding it on Amazon um, I think my friend got a bottle too and she texted me and she was like, oh my gosh, it does, it smells like you, it smells like the original poison. It's so good, you guys. It's such a good $10 well spent. And again, I think you can find it on Amazon. So anyways, that one is called Position for Women. Okay, this next one is a Giles Cantuel fragrance. And I bought a Giles Cantuel perfume. Golly, it's been a few years back. It was just called Vini or Vanilla. And it's, an, it's actually kind of a clone for Tom Ford's Tobacco Vini. It's really beautiful. I'm gonna do, I have very few tobacco perfumes, like a pretty limited selection, but I do have some. Um, and I am gonna do a tobacco video pretty soon. And you will definitely see it in that video. It's a really, really nice perfume though. And I think I got it on one of the Canadian websites for maybe in the $15 range. It was really, really affordable. Um, so I'm always interested when I see Giles Cantuel fragrances. You can't find them a lot, uh, or I should say you don't come across them very often. And so when I came across this one called Arsenal, I looked up the notes immediately and then I just blind bought it because it was on FragranceNet. Um, it was really pretty affordable and it's so nice, you guys. And I was really lucky to have found a tester. Um, I find that whenever I get emails from FragranceNet saying that they're doing like a tester sale and I click on those emails and I start going through the pages of testers, I end up finding some really interesting fragrances. Um, but anyways, this one, oh, 
This one is beautiful. This is warm, kind of slightly floral caramel. It's so, so nice. So the notes on this one are lychee, peach, freesia, orange, and melon, jasmine, lily, heliotrope, orange blossom, and magnolia, caramel, vanilla, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, vetiver, and moss. The florals in it are not overly floral. They're just really, really well blended and very warm. And then with the caramel, and the caramel isn't an overly sweet caramel. It's not, um, it's not really sweet. It doesn't smell super gourmand or like something that you would want to eat. It just smells really warm and cozy and kind of slightly sweet and it's just stunning. It's stunning. I did pick this up in the summertime, so it was pretty warm out when I got this. I did wear it a couple times, even in the heat, and it was beautiful. It just didn't, it didn't project a ton and it didn't last very well. So I'm gonna keep this one out. I'm gonna give this a really good wear test now that it's cold, and I will update you guys on how this one performs. This is such an underrated little gem though. If you like warm, cozy, kind of slightly sweet, um, it's nothing groundbreaking. It doesn't smell like really anything I've ever smelled before, but it does at the same time. It's one of those that there's nothing like super special about it. It is super nice. It's like a sweet fragrance that's not juvenile smelling. And I don't know, all of the warm florals in it are just so beautiful. I'm really, I've really been into warm floral fragrances lately too, so this is just like right up my alley right now because I'm really into cozy florals, so, which I'm gonna do a whole video on warm florals. I've already got a bunch of fragrances pulled for it because I'm really into them right now. So anyways, that one is called um, Arsenal from Giles Cantuel. Okay, next, this is one that I just picked up a few months ago and I think it's amazing for what it is and for the price. Um, this is a fragrance from Cremo, and this is called Spice and Black Vanilla. Apparently this is a pretty spot on dupe for Victor and Rolf's Spice Bomb Extreme. Um, I'm still, I still need to get my nose on Spice Bomb Extreme, but I've had several people tell me that their husbands or boyfriends have both this and Spice Bomb Extreme, and that when they run out of Spice Bomb Extreme, they're just gonna buy this because it smells just as good. Um, and this is only $20. And in fact, last time I looked on the Walmart website, they had this marked down to $15. And this is a huge bottle. This is a 3.4 ounce or 100 ml bottle. It's huge. Um, it's amazing. This one is completely unisex. This is a men's line of like, they have fragrance and the shave cream, and I think they even make razors and stuff. If you've been following this channel for any amount of time, you know that I really don't like to smell masculine at all. I really pretty much just wanna smell very feminine all the time. So even a lot of unisex fragrances don't work for me because I feel like they lean masculine. This one is just perfect. It is unisex. I could definitely smell this on a man or a woman but this has enough sweetness to it from the vanilla that it's just, it's perfection. It's warm, it's warm and cozy and spiced and sweet. It's beautiful on skin and I love it. It's wonderful for layering over pretty much any lotion. You could layer it over really any kind of lotion and it would smell so good. It's just such an amazing find, and if you can get it for $15, that's even better. They've got a bunch of other scents, too. I don't think I've smelled any of the others. Well, actually, no, I did pick up one other one, and it was too masculine for me, but yeah, they do have a ton of scents. Um, I just think it's such an underrated gem. I don't know that I've ever really heard anybody else talk about it, and I love it. Yeah, it's a little Walmart gem. So anyways, that is Cremo Spice and Black Vanilla. Okay, these next two, I slept on these for way too long because they're celebrity scents and because of who the celebrity is. I'm not a huge fan of the Kardashians. I never have been. I'm just not a huge fan of celebrities in general. And I'll buy celebrity scents. Like, I don't have any problem picking up celebrity scents if they're good ones. These ones, to me though, are absolutely exceptional, especially this one. This is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. And I did sleep on this one for a long time. This is one that for uh, years, it would go in and out of my cart, in and out of my cart, because I just couldn't, I don't know, I just was, I couldn't pull the trigger on it. And finally I did, and thank goodness I did, because this perfume is so good. It is so good. There's something about it that, Number one, it smells way more expensive than it is. I think you can get this for, I wanna say between 12 
and $15 on fragrance nets. There's something about this that is very, very nostalgic smelling for me. There's something about it that smells like something from my childhood, like maybe some kind of a lip gloss I had or maybe some kind of a toy that I had. I don't know, there's something about it that is very nostalgic. It's really, really rich smelling. It really does smell like golden honey and the most beautiful, white florals. I think for me, this is the most underrated gem on this list. I think that this is one of the best affordable fragrances on the market. It's just so good. It's one of those perfumes that I could not live without this in my collection. I just think it's stunning. Not even just for the price. If it were 50 or 60 or even $100, I would think it smelled amazing. But I just cannot believe like what I smell in this for being like a $15 perfume. I haven't smelled a ton of Kim Kardashian fragrances, but I would dare to say that this might be one of the best ones she's ever done. It's just really good. It's really, really good. It brings me comfort and happiness. It's warm, it's cozy. You can wear it any time of year. It's particularly amazing in the spring. It makes a great transition fragrance from winter to spring. It's just amazing. I could sit here and go on about it forever because I love it. And the longer I have it, the more I fall in love with it. It's just one of those fragrances that, I don't know. I just think it's amazing. And I think it's super underrated. Um, obviously, if you're not a honey lover, I would not go near this because it's definitely a honey fragrance but it's one of those honey fragrances that I feel like the honey doesn't go weird. And I can see where honey does go weird. Thankfully, I have a good relationship with honey. It usually meshes really well in my skin. I have had a couple though that haven't, so I totally understand what, it's, what honey is like when it's just not good. Um, but I, I don't know, this one, there's something about this one that I feel like the honey would work for a lot of people. It's just amazing. So anyways, that is Kim Kardashian Pure Honey. Probably the best fragrance in my opinion on this list for the price. And then another Kim Kardashian fragrance that I think is such an amazing underrated gem is this one here. This is Fleur Fatale. And number one, I love this bottle. I think it's so cute. It's such a beautiful like concept, especially for a celebrity fragrance. I just think it's so good. But this is another one that I slept on forever because, well, a lot, a lot of the reason why is because a lot of people compare this to Stella, or I think I saw it on Fragrantica, like a lot of people have it smells like Stella or have it, you know, in the smells like section, this is, people compare it to Stella. I don't think it smells like Stella at all. Yeah, not at all, but it is stunning in its own right. It is, it's a super fresh, delicate, sweet rose fragrance. It smells like a rose and peony combination because it's got that beautiful, bright, crisp, delicate, like sweet, kind of peony rose scent. I mean, I feel like you could throw this in a Christian Dior bottle and put Miss Dior on it and you would not know the difference. It just smells really, really nice. This is one that you can find for like $12. It's so affordable. And I just think for the price, it's an amazing fragrance. It's There's nothing groundbreaking about it. Um, it's a beautiful fresh rose and as it dries down the rose um, The rose kind of I don't know blooms on your skin and it's just beautiful and fresh and slightly green and wispy and Sweet and feminine and it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning I just think it's such an amazing for being a $12 fragrance and again It's probably one of the better ones that Kim Kardashian has done um, I haven't, again, I haven't gotten my nose on a ton of them because there aren't a ton of them on discount websites and I absolutely will not pay, you know, upwards of $100 for a Kim Kardashian fragrance. Um, and I don't really want to support that family, but if they pop up on the discount sites, I will definitely pick them up because, I mean, the ones that I have smelled, I have smelled a couple that I didn't necessarily care for, but these ones, I, they're amazing. <laughs> I mean, they're just amazing. So anyways, this one is Fleur Fatale. 
Okay, next, this is one of my favorite cheapies in my collection. I just think it's so good for, for being a $10 perfume. Um, it's amazing, and my husband loves this one. This is a fragrance from Victoria's Secret, and this is called Pink Gold. Um, I picked this up during a semi-annual sale. It must have been maybe three years ago now. I blind bought it. I just kind of took a chance on it um, because the notes are amber crystals and vanilla, two things I absolutely love, amber and vanilla. And I adore this perfume. Number one, it was $10, and this thing performs like an absolute beast. It's sweet, it's warm, it's cozy. I wear it all year round. I'll wear this in the dead of the heat. It's stunning in the cold weather. It performs really, really well no matter what time of year it is. It performs well in the heat, it performs well in the cold. It's just amazing. It's simple, there's nothing groundbreaking about it. There, It smells like a, you know, a Victoria's Secret body lotion, like a really nice, uh, perfumey, vanilla and amber body lotion, but in a perfume form maybe a little bit more higher end than a body lotion. It smells more like a perfume. I love it. It's so, this is one of my comfort fragrances. This is one of the perfumes that when I feel like I just need a cozy, something cozy on, um, you know, maybe I'm having a bad day or I'm, I've got anxiety or, you know, that's what happens a lot. If I get anxiety, I'll, I tend to go reach for perfumes that are going to bring me like immediate comfort when I smell them. And this is one of them. There's just something about this. My beautiful friend sent me a, two more bottles of this because she was anosmic to it, which breaks my heart <laughs> because I love this fragrance so much and I would love for it to bring comfort to other people too. It just makes me so happy. But yeah, I will wear this literally all year round. It's such a, it's one of my comfort fragrances. And if you can find it and pay $10 for it, I highly recommend it. Just hopefully you're not a Nosmic to it too. So anyways, that is Pink Gold from Victoria's Secret. This next one, it's debatable. This, this, well, this next one used to be affordable and then it got super hyped up in the fragrance community and now everybody has jacked up the price on it. You can still, I think you can still find it on eBay for right around $30, maybe $35, which if you can do that, it's still pretty affordable. If you're paying like upwards of $50, then it, you know, it's debatable whether that's, a, that's not affordable for everybody. But this is Mercedes-Benz Club Black and this was another fragrance that I completely slept on. I had a bunch of people tell me in a live one time that I really needed to pick this up because I would love it because I'm such a vanilla lover and man, am I glad I listened and I'm glad that I got in on it before it got really, really overhyped and the prices got jacked up on it. Um, speaking of a live, I am gonna do another live at some point. It's hard because I'm in this Airbnb and it's pretty loud around in this area of the town that we're living in. Um, and my daughter is, you know, not always super well behaved. So I, and, but I've always got her. So, I mean, um, yeah, so it's hard for me to plan to do a live. Um, usually I just have to have a talk with her and tell her to behave. She loves to be on them. So as long as she's, you know, good, which she's such a good kid, but but anyways, I am planning on doing another live, hopefully soon, fingers crossed. I love doing them, they're so fun. Let me know in the comments down below what a good time for you guys is. Like, what I would love to find like maybe the best time to do a live where everybody could you know, be there at least for a little bit. That would be amazing if you guys would just put it in the comments real quick, you know, a good time that you think would be for me to do a live, and maybe even a day. Uh, I can pretty much work it out anyway. Anyways, back to the perfume. Sorry, this again, Mercedes-Benz Club Black. It's technically a men's cologne. It's a beautiful custardy vanilla. A warm, creamy, slightly spiced, custardy vanilla. I love it. This, anytime I spray this and smell it, it reminds me of like a cream-filled donut. It really does. It's so good. It's, and it's funny, this is probably the only men's clone that I, well, is it? 
I think it really is the only men's cologne that I have in my collection that I will wear um, because I don't feel like it smells too masculine at all in me. I love it. It's just amazing. Again, I don't know how affordable it is anymore. You do have to look. I think the last time I looked, the best prices I found were on eBay. But as soon as it stops being hyped up, and then the prices will start to fall, hopefully. But anyways, that is Mercedes-Benz Club Black. Such a good one. Okay, this next one, I talk about this in every underrated gem video I've ever done. I've talked about this fragrance, but I cannot leave it out because for me, it's just, it's such a good, perfume. This is a fragrance from Lanvin and it's called Jean Lanvin. And this is another one. There's nothing groundbreaking about it, but this one is really youthful smelling and it's so happy and bubbly smelling and bright and slightly fruity. It's kind of slightly smells like berries. There's nothing heavy about this. It's super easy going, easy to reach for. Just a happy perfume. If you guys remember the Gucci 2 perfume, the one in the little cube bottle and it had the pink liquid, that's kind of what this smells like. I did at one point compare the two. I had, I had a mini of Gucci 2, golly, years and years ago. And when I, I still had a little bit of it left when I first picked up Jean Lanvin and I did compare them and they were similar. They were definitely, it was definitely not a dupe of Gucci too, but it definitely a smell alike. I mean, it was, it's close enough that I would definitely call it a smell alike. So if you remember that fragrance and you like that fragrance or you like fragrances like that, I think you would love Jean Lanvin. It's very, very similar. Just super easy to reach for. Such a crowd pleaser. People love the way this smells. It's just an easy, easy perfume. And for the price, this is another one that I think you can get for, I think this one ounce bottle is maybe $14 or something, if I remember correctly. I remember it being really, really inexpensive. I don't think I paid over $20 for it, that's for sure. Maybe even 18. I would say be between maybe 14 and $18, somewhere in there. I know the one ounce bottle is really, really inexpensive. So anyways, that is uh, Jean Lanvin from Lanvin. Okay, next, this one will be no surprise to anybody. I've been talking about this a lot recently. Um, this is a fragrance from Jean-Louis Scherer, and this is called Immense Pour Femme. I love this perfume. This is, this is a very 2000s smelling, kind of sweet, slightly woody, slightly floral, warm vanilla fragrance. It's very lightly resinous and it's just super warm and cozy. I love this. The only problem with this is it performs way better for me in the heat <laughs> than it does in the cold. It smells much more like a cold weather fragrance. This is, um, every time I talk about this, I talk about how it's, for me, in my fragrance collection, this sits with my Chopard Casimir and my um, Rochat Tocad because it's a fragrance like those. It's a kind of slightly dated smelling, but in a good way. Warm, cozy. It doesn't project like a beast, but it lasts forever in the heat. It doesn't last very long in the cold weather. Well, I need, again, I need to try this in the really cold weather to see how it does. It was just kind of starting to get cold, so it was still kind of in the 60s, low 70s when I wore this. So it might be just, I don't know, the day that I wore it, it just wasn't a good day for it. So I am gonna try it again. I will update you guys again as soon as I do wear it and let you know if it really doesn't perform well in the heat. But yeah, this to me is a super underrated gem. I think it's about $18 on FragranceNet and I am in love with it. I guess it's the vintage aspect of it, the fact that it's really warm smelling, it's kind of slightly sweet, it's a little bit vanillic. It's just everything that I love about a fragrance and the fact that it's vintage leaning to me is like the cherry on the cake. So anyways, yeah, love it. Super underrated little gem. I've never heard anybody else talk about this one. Um, and I adore it. So that is Jean-Louis Scherer and that is called Immense Pour Femme. Okay. Next. I think I talked about this one in my first or in my last, um, underrated gems video, but I talk about this one as much as I can because 
I love this fragrance and I do think that it is incredibly underrated. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody else talk about this one and I love it. I think it's stunning for the price. This is a fragrance from Pascal Morabito and this is called Pure Pearl. I love this perfume. Um, the packaging on this one, the bottle is very, very deceptive. If you look at this, you would think, and with a name like Pure Pearl, you will think that it's going to be something fresh, that it's going to be maybe something that you would want, like, I don't know, maybe soapy, maybe even a light floral. It's none of those things. Um, this, it's sweet, syrupy. Yeah, it smells like sweet, syrupy caramel, like sugary caramel. It smells almost gourmand. It smells almost like something that you would want to eat. Um, it doesn't smell anything like a clean perfume. I mean, Pure Pearl is a horrible name for it. It should be something gourmand leaning, but it's so good. It's so nice. If you love kind of sweet gourmand kinds of fragrances, I think you would love this. It's very, very affordable. Pascal Morabito fragrances, you can usually find them between like 18 and $22, I would say. They're usually somewhere in between there. This one is really inexpensive and super underrated. This one, it doesn't perform the best. I need to wear it again soon and refresh my memory on how it performs. It's been a while. I wanna say though that I always think it's not gonna perform well, but then every time I wear it, I get at least like six hours out of it. So I don't think it's horrible. I just, don't, it's not like a super beast. It's not gonna be there for 12 plus hours. But six hours for me is good if you, you know, would only have to reapply it maybe once throughout the day. I feel like that's kind of a win. So anyways, beautiful, beautiful perfume. I never hear anybody talk about it. It's really, really affordable and I love it. So this is Pascal Morabito Pure Pearl. Okay, this next one is definitely, I've heard other people talk about this one for sure. This one is definitely an underrated gem though. I feel like it's a staple. If you are an amber lover, I feel like it should be a staple in your collection. Um, this is Halston Woman Amber, and this is such an amazing little $12 fragrance. And I think that's what I paid for mine, 12 bucks. Um, it's such a beautiful, sweet, spicy, kind of traditional smelling amber. It's gorgeous. Um, it is a little rough around the edges. It's definitely not as smooth or as refined smelling as a lot of the other ambers that I've got in my collection, but for what it is, it's beautiful. It's just a really easy going, easy to reach for, warm, sweet amber fragrance. And really after, it does smell a little bit, like I said, rough around the edges when you first spray it on, but after it dries down, it's, I mean, it could easily rival any of my other expensive or niche amber fragrances. Once it dries down, everything kind of smooths out, starts warming on your skin. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a little bit sweeter than some of my other ambers as well, but it's also a little bit darker smelling than some of my other ambers, but I absolutely love it. Again, for $12, it's a steal. You really can't go wrong with it. It's gorgeous. If you're an amber lover, it's one that you have to have. I mean, it's so good. So anyways, that is Halston Woman Amber. And then last but not least is this little Playboy fragrance that I have. I picked up a whole bunch of these perfumes. Um, it's been a while ago it's just to kind of test them out because I'd really never tried any Playboy perfumes. This is, I think, the only one that I ended up keeping. This one, I love. This one is called Queen of the Game. Oh, this one is so nice. This one reminds me of, this one gets, it gets compared to Black Opium, but I don't think it smells like Black Opium. It's much more fruity, much more fruity smelling than Black Opium. Um, it's got, this one has got like black currant and orange blossom and coffee and tonka bean. It's really, really beautiful. Again, it's kind of similar to Black Opium, but it doesn't, this one, it's lighter, it's fruitier, it's easier to wear. Um, it's so good, it's so good. And for being, so, this is another like 10 or $12 perfume. And for being such an affordable perfume, you can get, especially in the co cooler weather, you can get a good five or six hours out of this. Especially, I always overspray everything, especially if it's, 
you know, a less expensive perfume, I'll just overspray it. You do not need to overspray Halston Amber though. You can go in with a couple sprays of Halston Amber and you'll be good for a while. But this one again, if you just overspray a little bit, you can easily get five or six good hours out of it and it just smells nice. It's another one that's super easy, it's people pleaser, it's warm, it's sweet, Ugh, and I love it. Again, it's the only one I kept because it's just such a nice little underrated gem. I haven't really heard anybody else talk about it either, so yeah, it's just, again, really, really nice. It's, of all of the Playboy perfumes I tried, this was hands down the best one. Um, and this is a pretty big bottle, I think. Yeah, this is a two ounce bottle. And again, I think I paid, actually, I think these are in between eight and $10, to be honest. I think these Playboy perfumes are really, really inexpensive. And anything warm or cozy, I'm just like all about. And it doesn't smell super generic. It doesn't smell cheap. Um, I really love it. I will tell you another perfume that is so, so nice that I don't have a full bottle of yet, but I am going to pick up a full bottle at some point is the James Bond perfume. The one in the black round bottle. That thing is so, so nice. I picked up a sample of it from FragranceNet and it was so good for being a James Bond perfume and being like, I don't know, really inexpensive. Again, it's probably between 10 and 15 bucks. It was so nice. It was fruity and rich and decadent smelling. And it was, that one is almost like heady. That perfume is like a heady perfume, but I loved it. I loved it. So those, that is another batch of affordable gems that I think are amazing little staples to have. They are really inexpensive and I think they're amazing for what they are. Um, I do hope that you all enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and I will see you in my next one. Bye.